Hello, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Babylon 5 today because there's been some very interesting news that I've heard about Babylon 5 that um, that I'm going to be getting to a little bit later on because I want to just take a moment to talk about what we know about the Babylon 5 reboot that's coming up. There's been a, a lot of things uh, talked about online about this was since the news came out a few months ago. So... What we know is that uh, Babylon 5 will be rebooted and it will be a new show on the CW network. Now, this is a young network that um, they make a few different shows um, for younger audiences, things like uh, Superman and Lois. So it's likely that the show will, will skew a bit, bit younger. Um, it will have uh, perhaps a younger cast than what we had with the original uh, show. And we also know that it's going to be a reboot. The um, the creator of the show, the great maker himself, JMS, J. Michael Straczynski, has said that the show is going to be a ground-up reboot, somewhat like uh, Battlestar Galactica's um, uh, outing in the 2000s was, was quite a different show to the show from a few decades earlier than that. So... And, and I think that's actually probably a good thing because so much about the original show, the, the interest was to do with uh, having mysteries and having um, plot twists and revelations and, you know, you didn't know where it was going to go next and it often went to, in some, to some very surprising places. So you can't kind of just retell the exact same stories again. Um, there's just too much information out there that's... Um, that's already out there about the original show if, if you went looking it up. Um, and so as a fan, I, I kind of do want something different. I want to see new storylines and perhaps storylines that we didn't get to see in the original in the original version of the show that didn't quite play out the way that the creator had expected. It might be interesting to see some of those uh, storylines play out um, differently this time around. Although that being said, I have to say that um, one of the great things with the original show was the fact that there were these uh, unusual uh, occurrences that happened um, due to the uh, the way the, the, the production went. Um, actors left, the, you know, so they had to write out characters and so on. And what that meant was that the show, um, the writer had to have all these trapdoors, um, ways for characters to, to be written out of the show. And, and that happened often. And so there were interesting twists that happened in the show as a result of that. And I think the show was actually better for that because we could lose a major character and then we get another character coming in to take their place who was in some respects better uh, suited to, to drive the story forward. And so, you know, sometimes the, the show seemed to actually get better <laughs> with a lot of these twists. Not always, but often. And so from my perspective, I, I'm concerned that if we if if the show removes some of the um, unpredictableness of real life that that did intrude into the into the original show's production, that what we might end up with is uh, more the creator's intent, but you actually lose some of the realism from the show because the real world was intruding into the original show um, in ways that did make it seem uh, bigger and, and more unpredictable, um, the bigger universe and and, and more unpredictable. Um, more like real life in, in, in a sense. So, um, yeah, I, so, but anyway, I, I think it, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be an interesting ride, definitely. So we've heard that, what have, what have we heard? We've heard that John Sheridan is going to be a main character uh, in, in the show and right from the get-go. Now, originally there was a different character uh, in, the, in the original show. We had... Uh, Jeffrey Sinclair, and he had a um, a love interest, Catherine Sakai, who and 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 this was an interesting dynamic that they had. Uh, Jeffrey Sinclair was was working at the station, which is with the main setting of the, the show, but then you'd have have this other character, Catherine Sakai, who was a pilot, and so she would go out to other worlds. So you could actually have this um, combination of 
setting most of the most of the episodes would be on the station but then you could also have this other character who could go out uh, of you know into space and in, to other worlds and show some of this other stuff that's going out on in the larger universe so i think that that combination was interesting and i'm guessing that they'll do something similar uh, by having this uh, john sheridan character on the station right from the get go but there's been speculation, um, and now we're getting into the section where we're going to be talking about some some, some rumours or wish list uh, stuff that's coming from places like Reddit. There has been some speculation that, about things that they might change with the show. For example, there's been talk about the idea that the commander of the station, Babylon 5, might not be the same as the ambassador. In the original show, there were ambassadors from different worlds, but the Earth ambassador was also the commander of of the space station Babylon Five as well. So in the orig- in the original uh, first season of the show, it was Jeffrey Sinclair. So he was both a military commander tasked with defending the station because it's a, it's basically a tin can sitting in space in neutral territory, and there are raiders who will come around and they would happily um, take control of the station if they if they could. Um, so you know it had to be militarily defended, and so they, there was a military commander in charge. But that person was also acting effectively as the Earth ambassador, which um, was kind of a conflict of interest in some respects. So I think that it's certainly a, a reasonable idea that they might actually separate off the person who is the uh, in command of the station uh, from a military point of view and an organisational point of view from the ambassador. So. Um, and this leads into the idea that some fans have had that maybe you could have someone like Bruce Boxleitner, who played John Sheridan in the original show, act as the ambassador, for example, if you were to have two two different characters there. Um, so my guess is John Sheridan will will be the commander of the station, the military commander of the station, but yeah, perhaps there will be another character, such as uh, an Earth ambassador there. Um, there's been plenty of speculation about who you know of the original cast might come back. As a fan, I don't actually need any of the the original cast to come back. Um, I think there's a risk from the storytelling telling point of view. Of course, it's very nice to have people from the Babylon Five family come back and play uh, some cameo roles. That would be that would be very nice, of course. But there is a risk from the point of, from a storytelling point of view is that the uh, older older uh, fans such as myself will be thrown out of the story when we suddenly realise that um, you know the, that that Mimbari character in makeup is actually um, Patricia Tallman or so, someone like that. I mean, I think it'd be great. I think the makeup probably would actually um, help a lot in that respect if if they are going to have some some of the old cast back it won't throw me out of the story too much if if they are in heavy makeup but i'll probably be able to recognize their voice right i think what would really ruin it for me well not ruin it but it would what would throw me as a well as a fan of the show would be if you got some character played by bruce boxleitner who's playing someone really different uh, this time around if we had for example alfred bester being played by bruce boxleitner i think that would that would sort of break my head because and it would it would make my life difficult because it would be hard to then have my kids watching the new version of the show and then to actually go and show them the old version of the show and they'll be every time they'll every time they see Don John Sheridan they're going to be thinking oh that's Alfred Bester you know he's the bad guy and ah oh, no that would be just too hard too hard for me to deal with so i think if the characters were sympathetic you know with their original roles i think that could work so one suggestion i saw for example was that um, claudia christian could come back as general haig now (laughs) i don't i i'd like to see i don't i don't know whether that that could ever happen um would ever happen but i would like to see it i guess uh from the from i guess two perspectives one is that i think if if she did come back as a character that was um, in that sort of role as being a kind of mentor figure for for some of the um, newer cast members, but in a role that is actually compatible with the, the the character that she was in the original show, I think that could you know from story wise, I don't think I would have a problem with it as a viewer. Uh, it wouldn't throw me out of the show uh, because the characters are sort of compatible. And the other reason, of course, I would like this to happen is because it would signify that there's been some sort of 
burying of the hatchet or moving on from events, whatever happened back at the end of season four, back in the day. I think that, we, it, you know, that, that would obviously please me to have some healing in the in the uh, the Babylon Five family that would that would be really great if that if 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 she was to come back uh, in some in some capacity. Yeah, so there's been all kinds of other uh, rumors flying around. I think they're just wish lists from people. Um, I, I, I don't lend them too much credence, but um, something I have heard that I that I would like to share uh, a couple of things actually. Uh, firstly. Um, Patricia Tolman has talked about uh, who she she played uh, Lydia Alexander um, back in the day. She has talked about from her from her knowledge of how JMS works. She's got a sort of rough timeline of of what might happen, um, which is which is her opinion. It's not confirmed at all, but um, what it looks like she's saying is that uh, around about now, December twenty twenty one, JMS will have his script pilot script ready. She's saying that they're probably going to shoot early 2022, and I don't, I don't know if that means February, March. So I guess they're casting now. That would that would sort of make sense. And then what she's saying is then filming a, a season, and then sort of 2023 is kind of when we can expect expect a um, a season of the show to to, to air. So. That's pretty exciting. Not, not too long to wait. Um, and I'm guessing that that what they'll do with that is something like a ten episode season, ten ten episodes a season. So that would sort of you would lose episodes like TKO. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know it would just be very very focused um, season pushing the story forward, which which would be great. I mean, you know, one of the great things with Babylon Five is just the the breadth of the universe and and it's because they had a lot of, lot of episodes to play with where they could actually develop a lot of things, um, develop the whole universe. So I am slightly worried that 10 episodes might uh, reduce the, the scope of the universe a bit. Um, but, but that ties into the next thing which I've heard, which, again, I don't know if this is real or this is someone making some stuff up. I've heard something about the casting of the pilot episode. And what I've heard is that there are characters going to be called... Hang on, let me have a look at what, what this says. So, there's going to be a character called John Sheridan. There's going to be a character called Anna Sheridan. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's to be expected. But there's also going to be a character called... Elisa Belden. Now, now Elisa Belden is a character. Okay, you, you, you might not immediately the, the name might not be familiar, but it is in fact there is a character from the original show called Elisa Belden, and this is okay. So she's a character. Let me explain. She is a character who um, she was an orphan. I think she was like meant to be sixteen years old, something like that. She's in one episode. I think it's um, season. I can't even remember which season it's in. Um, anyway, it is a it is a story about a character who she's been orphaned. She's been living in down below. She's um, she's kind of a bit lost and alone. But she's actually a latent telepath, and she starts to manifest. Uh, telepathic abilities and uh, because it sort of becomes a character story between there's a bit of a tussle um, over her fate um, that where basically Susan Ivanova is sort of fighting with uh, Talia Winters about you know what should happen to this to this character and so Elisa Belden is a character she she finds out some things about um, about Delenn during the episode now okay if she's actually going to be a character in the pilot, this is actually very interesting to me because I think what this means is that, um, well, firstly, it's a younger character, which is interesting. Um, and that sort of gels with what we've heard about it. You know, the show's going to be on uh, the CW uh, network. And so casting a younger character in the pilot would be a, um, you know, it would be a way to get into the show. Now, 
What I don't know is if there's meant to be a character in either parents of um, Elisa Belden. Uh, I think in the original show, the character had a mother and or uh, who had died, right? So she was or- an orphan, but um, but there had been this, uh, there had been a mother, perhaps. Um, so what would be interesting to me is if they if they had this character actually arriving on the station with a mother, and we actually followed her story um, from there. Um, now another interesting idea with this is if she actually arrives on the station and then gets involved with whatever's going on and maybe has some telepathic uh, encounter there that you know gives her a clue that she's got some got some abilities there um, you know if she sort of gets into the mystery that's uh, that way and or or if the the if the audience sort of finds out about what's going on that way because um, and that was sort of the role that uh, Lita Alexander had in the original pilot in The Gathering. Um, so if if Elisa Belden actually takes on that role in the pilot and of sort of giving us an insight into what's going on, then that, this is interesting because it means we've got this younger character for, you know, perhaps going after a younger audience, sort of introducing the show, in, introducing the station through her eyes. Uh, and another idea is that if if she was you know being introduced to the station but then also she sort of sees down below and so on then maybe they could flesh out down below a bit because i think the original show down below was kind of it never felt like a real place well sometimes sometimes it did but a lot of the time it felt like it was just a convenience a place where the writer could you know needed a character of some kind, and you know, where are they going to get them from? Oh, well, we'll pull them out of down below. And I think that Elisa Belden in the original show was kind of like that as well. Um, down below is just sort of a convenient place to have a stash of characters you can pull on, and that's fine. But it would be nice to actually flesh out that aspect of the show, um, that, that aspect of the the station a bit more. Um, we certainly saw, you know, there was a whole episode about the Dockers Guild, for example, that really made that aspect of the show. Um, work for me, even though we didn't really see the Dockers Guild much uh, in any other episode. Just having one episode dedicated to that actually made that place feel, you know, like made that sort of role uh, of those Dockers uh, feel um, real to me. Anyway, this is an interesting idea. I don't know if that's if that's what what they're going to do with this character, um, but anyway, that that sounds sounds like a smart move to actually have a have a sort of younger character a younger civilian um, in in the show now another name leapt out of this list that I saw posted um, and it is a, a name that may not be familiar to people but it is will Cole um, now will Cole William Cole apparently in the original show um, was the brother of Marcus Cole who is the Ranger who arrives on the station in season three now so marcus they don't actually i don't know if they ever referred to him that if they ever gave him a name in the show but um he had a younger brother who was a ranger he was like one of the first um earth rangers and um and i think he died and but he pro- he made marcus promise to um to become uh, a ranger himself, and so this he's sort of part of the backstory of of Marcus. Now, if this character is in the pilot, or in you know, if I I don't know, don't know if they're going to continue into season one or or what. But if if they've got this younger brother of Marcus as a character, again, I think this could be great for having getting a younger audience into the show. But also, what would be interesting is if this character can also go off station, like presumably the Anna Sheridan character will probably take on the role of some some of Catherine Sakai's um, what, what she was doing in season one. That is going off 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 station and showing uh, some of these other other worlds or or other space stations that are around the place. But basically building the universe from the very first season. I think that you know that could be a really nifty way to to sort of build the reality of the universe right from the start in a way that I think they probably couldn't do in the original show because in the original show 
there were budgetary constraints, which meant that they had to, you know, film on the same, you know, use the same, reuse the same corridors and the same walls and the same sets and so on. Which, of course, was how they, how we got the the great show in the first place was the fact that they were so clever with the way that they um, they managed their budget. Um, so you know that was a great thing in the original show, but I think if they if they narrowed it down to ten episodes, really focused in on the ten episodes, then they can use their budget in a different way in this version of the show, and they might well be able to give us some different space stations or give us some different planets and have some spaceships and have uh, some characters going off the station occasionally and making those other worlds a bit more real right from the early um, early parts of the of the show early season so uh, you know this these two names have really got me very excited about the new version of the show if if it's real if these names are true um then I think we're going to get some interesting new storytelling from the show. And, you know, regardless of what happens, I think we're going to get some interesting new uh, storytelling of the show. So I am i can't wait for it. I think it's going to be great. Anyway, that's been the roundup of uh, the rumours slash leaks slash whatever you want to call them. Wish list. Um, what do you want? <laughs> What do you want from the show? Uh, that's the interesting question. Post some, uh, post some, post some comments down below and uh, I'll uh, talk with you later. Bye.